Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another Stuckcast. And today I'm going to talk to you about Action Mailer. So I have here open a, a Rails Guides page here uh, on the Action Mailer uh, section. As you can see here in the introduction, Action Mailer allows you to send emails from your application using Mailer classes and views. So as you can see, it's a hell lot like controllers. Um, you have the, the, the respective classes. And views, just like you have um, the controllers um, classes, then you have the respective views. Action Mailer f um, works exactly uh, or very similar way to the controllers. Um, so let me just uh, show you what the app we're going to build. So this is it, a very simple app, as you can see, no styling at all. Uh, just lets you sign in, and I'm going to sign in with this account that I already have set up. And you have just the hello, John. Um, you have just um, uh, an app that can uh, make uh, posts. And then the users can also comment on those posts. Uh, and what it actually does is let me post here first post and some content. When I create the post, you can see here uh, in my email, which is using the same account, you can see I have received an email already and it says post created. This is my first mailer. Okay, so I send an email every time I create a post. Uh, but now what I can actually do is a, a, a real life situation. Let me sign in with a different user. The password is password. And now I'm Mike, I was John. Now I'm gonna comment on uh, John's post. If I comment here, comment, and I submit it, you can see here I already received an email so commented created hi John I'm the post owner Mike has just commented on your post and this is the common content So this is what I'm going to show you a very simple app but uh, uh, I think you will uh, understand very well how the action mailer works uh, first I'm going to uh, teach you how to send through your Gmail account which is perfectly fine if you want to send just a couple of emails but if you want to send a lots and lots of emails you should use um, a dedicated uh, email service for that uh, the one we're going to use is called Mandrill and it's provided by MailChimp so you know it's good um, so without more further ado, let's begin. Okay, so I'll start off by doing the complete blog application as fast as I can. So open the terminal, go to your root folder and type Rails new my mail app. Make, make sense. So uh, the first thing we'll do is uh, add um, device authentication to our app, so uh, user authentication. If you go to the GitHub's um, device official page repository, you can um, you can scroll down to the uh, getting started getting started section and just follow along. So the first thing we'll do after creating the app is uh, open our app, so my mail app, and here we are. Let's go to the gem file and let's put device here. So uh, let's go to CD my mail app. Okay, let's clear the console and run the bundle. Sorry, bundle. Okay, so the second thing we need to do is uh, install device. So let's type this on your terminal. Uh, press enter, it's going to install and successfully installed. Afterwards, let's create a model for our users. So let's call user. Okay, create all the files that we need, and now let's generate uh, the um, views. Okay, down here on the configuring views, you can just copy this command here, go to your terminal, paste it, and you see here all the views created. Now, I'm just going to do some changes to uh, the device defaults. Uh, I want to actually make, uh, make a new controller, uh, and let's call registrations underscore controller dot rb. Uh, I just want to make some changes because I want to uh, be able to register the user's name and for that I have a code snippet here that I'm going to paste and explain. This very simple, you create a controller called registrations 
uh, and you put this code there, these two private methods. Essentially what it's doing is overwriting a device's uh, parameters. So I want to add, the reason why I did this is because I want to add this name field here. Okay, so the second thing we need to do is going to our migration and add the user name field. So t dot string name. Okay, we can close it. We can close it. And now let's go to our routes, and we want to uh, change this device for users, uh, but we want to uh, specify. Uh, um, a custom controller. Uh, the way to do this, uh, as you can see here, tell the router to use this controller. You can just copy this uh, code here and paste it, uh, change it for this one. So it's still of course device for users, but now we specify the controllers here. We want the registrations controller and our file is called registrations. Okay. So this is all we need to do to set up our device. So we are good to go and uh, agree. let's migrate the database. Okay, it's created. Now let's create um, for the posts. Let's do a scaffold for the posts. Let's generate scaffold post. The fields that we want are title, which is a string, um, content, which is text, and we want to have some uh, sort of relationship between users and posts. So we want to put here a foreign key uh, called user ID. And this way, Rails is smart enough to know that this user ID is a foreign key. And uh, it will um, um, set all the, the, the relationships uh, that we need. Um, okay, it's done. So now we can actually migrate the table. Now let's create the relations, relationships between the posts and the user. So we know that posts uh, is going to have many posts, and the user and the post, sorry, is going to belong to a user. Okay, with this relationship here and the foreign key, uh, this is all uh, that Rails needs to um, uh, set up uh, the relationship. So. Now, um, let's create just um, a controller for our uh, home page. So uh, let's do Rails G controller, and we want just the home controller, sorry. And we want just one action, which is index. And uh, on the index, uh, we're going to have um, just a, a simple if condition here, there. Let's go to a home controller under the index and we want to use actually one of device helpers here as I can show you here these are all device uh, helpers that uh, you can use uh, wherever you want so this one is a user sign in this is going to check if a user is signed in if, and if it is we want them to redirect to the posts path okay this is the simply what we want to do and on the layout now, let's go to the views, layouts, application HTML.TRB. In here, we want to put this simple if else condition too. Let me just copy and explain it to you. So, below the body and above the yield tag, uh, it's very simple here. So, if the user is sign in, I want it to uh, display hello and the current user dot name. This is another device uh, helper that fetches the current user object. So it, uh, you can uh, then go search for the attribute. So uh, hello, current uh, user dot name, and then the link to sign out. If it is not signed in, then give me these two links to sign in or to register. Okay, this is all. Uh, this is all we need. Now. Let's see what we have so far. Actually, let's start the rail server. I think there is no migration pending. Okay, let's see what we have. Okay, localhost. This is uh, the, the route because we didn't set up yet. So let's go to uh, config routes. Instead of get here, let's put root and home action. Controller is home, the action is index. Okay, so let's refresh it. And you can see it goes to the uh, to the index action. Okay, so you can see you have a sign in form and a sign up form. Very simple. And notice that if I try actually 
it will allow me to go there yeah because first we need to do um, set some user authentication in the post controller and we do this by pasting this before action uh, in the respective controller so let's go to our posts controller and right the first line should be before action authenticate user so you will authenticate the user um, each time you go to there as you can see if I try to go to posts it will redirect me again to user sign in okay so this is uh, complete and now let's sign up with some users so um, ah okay so I forgot something I need to actually come here to the um, device views and I add um, that extra field but I didn't add it here at the actual views so um, let's put an extra field here it will be not an email field but a text one it's going to be name name and let's take the out of focus of the second one and let's copy and paste it on the edit as well okay let's just remove the out of focus from the second one okay so this is all you need to be uh, up and running if I refresh it now you can see you see here a name a name field and let's put the first one is Mike the email is that one password is password okay let's sign out and uh, register another one this one is going to be John the email is my mailer app password password okay now let's create a um, let's actually change a little bit the post controller so that we can uh, connect the uh, posts with uh, the correspond correspondent uh, user. The way to do it is you open the post controller, you come here to the create action and in here instead of just creating one uh, individual or uh, let's say independent post, we're gonna assign it to a user. So at user equals current user, you know this helper already, and in here, instead of post.new, we want to put user.posts.new. So this will connect the post with the uh, uh, current user. So if I refresh now, if I type uh, new post, uh, actually, I don't want the user here. I'm going to delete it afterwards. So let's put first post, as you can see here, con content for the post. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do it. As fast as I can and you see the user is two it was assigned to John okay so it's working now just uh, let's just delete all that information uh, on the post views that we don't need we don't need this field user ID here we don't need the uh, um, the index as well we don't need this post dot user dot ID we don't need of course in the show this post dot user ID okay are all set now um, to uh, create the actual uh, posts so to do the posts let's uh, generate a, um, a model so let's clear the console rails g model comment and in the comment we want just content which is text and the same uh, foreign key so uh, we want to use uh, the same rela relationship we had between the posts and users now we want it with uh, comments and posts uh, so we press enter it does what we want now just migrate the table and into the models let's create the relationship so a post has many comments and the comment belongs to a post okay this is all rail rails needs to um, config the relationships so now we are ready to actually uh, make a, a controller for the um, for the uh, comments so um, let's create a comments underscore controller dot RP in here I'm gonna paste some code there comment comment controller here we go explain you just to make it a little faster so we have just one method here which is uh, create and the same way as the user so we, we first fetch the post 
and then we assigned the post uh, to that comments or, or else the comments uh, that we're going to create we're going to assign uh, to that particular post and then we redirect it to the post uh, on which we commented. In here is just a, a strong parameters uh, as we have, I'm sure you have seen already. Instead of doing all of this in here, we just uh, define a private method. Okay, so now we want a partial to be rendered on the show um, on the show view of the post because we want to click uh, the show um, post and then make a comment inside that post. So let's create a new folder here, the same as uh, posts. It must be with the same name, so comments. And here we have comments folder. Inside, let's create a new partial for the form. So html.erb. And let's paste the code that we had from posts. Let's create it here and let's just delete what we don't need. We don't need this error handling there. Uh, comments do not have titles, they just have contents and this should be enough. But uh, we want to actually uh, change this to be able to create comments. So uh, you're not only uh, referring, uh, you're not only making a, a form referencing the, uh, the post itself, but the comments of that post. So you have to put an array and inside first is the post uh, at post and then is post dot comments comments dot build this is the way to do it uh, this will um, connect the uh, comment that you are creating uh, it will reference the same uh, that uh, particular post uh, on which you are commenting uh, that's the way Rails handles the, the relationship. So uh, we can close this off. And in here, we want to have an H1 saying actually an H2 made my too big comments. Uh, and in here, we're going to put a break line here. And we're going to render the form here. Render. So comments, excuse me, comments form. This is the partial that is uh, right here. Um, now, what we want to do uh, is to render all the comments uh, up here. And the way to do is, uh, the way to do this is, 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 is very smart indeed. Uh, you will see uh, how smart Rails can be because you can actually put this render post.comments. What Rails expects is that if you if you are render when you put render is 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 looking for a partial and if you put the instance uh, I mean the, the object of that post and the comments is smart enough to know that you have to um, to have one uh, partial named comment for each of the comments and I'm going to show you how to do that you could come here and you create a new partial and you named it comment.html.erb and inside here you can actually relate to this you can actually put this uh, variable like this just comment.content he knows he's actually assigning this comment to uh, it's like a for each uh, it's, it's like a for each loop here. It's gonna uh, for each comment, for each comment there 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 is, uh, it's gonna look for the partial, and this is representing each comment. It's gonna loop through all the records there are. Okay, so this is all you need to do to render and um, uh, render the po the comments and the form. Um, the, the last thing we need to do is going to routes and we need a nested route here. We have to put resources posts do and inside resources comments. What this does is uh, I'm going to show you here what this is doing. If you type rig routes, it's going to show you all the, the routes that you have on your application. As you, you can see here, this is this is the routing for the posts. You see, they are independent. They they don't need anything else but 
the post. But in here, you see it's a new post comment, edit post comment and post comment. So for you to create a new comment, you need a post ID. This is what uh, nested routes, uh, nested routing is is doing essentially. Okay, so uh, I think now we have all of this set up. I think we are ready to create um, our first comments. So let's check it. Let's try. Let's put Rails S. And let's see what we have so far. Okay, no errors, which is good. Okay, my post here. Let's. Uh, I'm John. Let's go show. You see here the form there and content. Content for the comment. Let's see what happens. Okay, it created the comment, uh, as, um, which is related with uh, comments with three M's. Content is related to that first post there. So it's working exactly like we wanted. Now we are ready to start actually doing uh, some mailing. So to do that, you go here to your fol or mailer folders and you create a new class. Let's call it, uh, since the first uh, mailing we are going to do is about posts uh, being created, so let's call it postmailer.rb. Okay. Now you actually have to create a class here, the same name of course, which inherits from action mailer base. And in here you have, you're going to have several uh, methods as, as much as you want. And each method is a mail, is a new mail you're going to send. And each uh, method or mail has the respective view here. Uh, so first let's uh, create the views actually. The way to do it is create a new folder and following the Rails convention it must be the same name as the class. So uh, in our case, post mailer without a, any extension, of course. So it will create a folder here called uh, post mailer. Uh, at least, at least I hope it would do. Do you think maybe I I put the ah here it is. Took a while, but here it is post mailer. Now inside. You're gonna have the different templates, just like the controllers. You have the uh, controllers, then you have the respective views. The mailer is the same. You have the class and the respective view inside that folder. Now, in here, it's gonna save this file, and this file, uh, it's a template, so it corresponds to uh, each method. Imagine if you have a lot of methods here, a lot of mails. Each uh, template must have the same name as the method. So let's save this, and I know that the first method is going to be called post created dot html dot erb. Okay, let's just delete this post created. Okay, so we have all the views set up. Now let's set up the mailer in here. I know already it's called post created. In here you pass a, a method called mail inside. The argument that it passes here is the NASH, uh, and the, inside that hash you have the different uh, headers, mails, the, the, the mail uh, headers. So the first is to, next comes the from, then the subject, uh, and then if you want to do a very simple email, you can put the actual body here. So um, I think this is very self-explanatory. So the to is, is going to be the user where you want to send this. The from is the domain there or the email that you want to send from. The subject is the subject and the body is the content of the email. So uh, let's do, uh, let's try and do it, um, the, the post, uh, the, the mail that we want. So we want to, each time I create a post, I receive an email saying that I've just created a post. So to do that, what we need to do is the two, of course, is going to be, uh, we want it to be dynamic. Uh, so uh, we're going to pass here an argument called user. And in here, I'm going to call the user dot email. Now the from, uh, using the Gmail uh, 
SMTP settings, it will override this from. It will make no difference what you put in. Uh, but in uh, on the Mandrill, it's a different case. It will actually uh, send this header. So we are using a Gmail, so it won't uh, make sense. Um, so let's uh, let's just put something like services services at gmail.com. You can do that. There is no problem at all. On the subject, let's put post created. Um, okay, on the body, let's put this is my first mailer. Okay, okay, everything's said and done. Now, what we actually need to do is go to our controllers, our posts controller, where we want to call this mailer and the method. So, the way to do it is we want to go to the create action, and if it's saved, so if the post is actually created, we want to uh, call the mailer post mailer dot and now the name of the method post created and now we pass the argument here so I want the current user that is making the post to receive an email that is created that it, that it, uh, it just created an email so let's pass this argument over there and you have to put dot deliver otherwise it will create the email but we, it will not send the email okay so the last thing, of course, is configuration. It's very simple the way you configure SMTP with Gmail and or Mandrill. Uh, the SMTP settings are very, very easy to implement. So you open the, the application.rb under the config folder and you just have to type this. I have a code snippet here. You can Google it for uh, SMTP's uh, Gmail settings or Action, action Mailer uh, or uh, Gmail SMTP Rails. Uh, you will you will find this um, uh, with no difficulty. So these five fields are standard, so it, it will always be the same. But the username and password, of course, uh, it won't. So you have to put here your, uh, in this case, your Gmail account and your password. The reason why I um, commented this uh, environment, environment variables here is because uh, if you want to do on a live uh, productions website, uh, you would not put uh, your credentials on your code. Uh, it's not um, the way you do it. Uh, we are just using on the development environment, so there is no trouble. But imagine if you have a GitHub account and you push this code to GitHub, uh, everyone can see your credentials. Uh, so the way to do it is you actually put uh, you assign environment variables and then you set this uh, on your production uh, host. Uh, okay, so we are all set to begin and test our uh, mailer. So let's go to Gmail, to, G, to the Google Chrome, and sorry, let's create a new post. So first, po first user post and content for the post. Let's see what happens. I create the post. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, the post was in fact created. The, uh, one last thing that I f completely forgot uh, is uh, under the config folder environments, you go to the development RP uh, because that's the environment that we are working on. We just need to add uh, extra configuration right here. Uh, lastly, so config action mailer not raise delivery, but raise. Um, I'm sorry. Dot delivery method. It must be set, of course, to SMTP. Okay, so let's um, begin and uh, start the Rails server again. And now let me just go back. Let me destroy this post. Let's create a new one. So. Uh, Posting content and let's create it. Okay, so it's taking a little while, which is good. You can see the post is created, and here I already received an email from myself because I'm currently setting up uh, with this uh, Gmail account. And as you can see, post created is a subject, the body was this is my first mail. You see, already working. So now let's do uh, uh, something a little more fun. So let's do um, a mailing uh, that if the user creates a post and now and then a, a different user uh, comments uh, on that post, uh, the post owner will receive an email saying that the um, 
uh, a user commented on your post. So let's put here, doesn't matter. Okay, now when I comment this post, I want to receive an email here saying that, you see, I have just created another post and I received the email, so it's it's actually working. Uh, now, when I, when I comment this uh, post here, I want to receive an email, if I'm the post owner, saying that somebody, and I want to know the name, uh, commented on my post. So let's do it. The, the, the way to do it is exactly the same way. So you go here under the mailers and you create a new mailer class. So now let's call it comment mailer.rv. Let's paste the code from the post mailer to here. Okay, let's just change a little bit. Comment mailer. This is going to be comment created, and I want some more data here, so I want to pass more arguments over here. But first, let's go to the controller because it's going to be easier for it to me to explain. So let me just uh, open the comments controller here, and I want the post user, and I can get this because of the relationship between users and posts. I want the content of the comment, uh, and I want the current user. So the way to do it is uh, if saves, uh, this is the same thing after creation, we want to call the mailer, sorry, call the mailer dot, now the name of the method, which is comment created, and now let's pass some arguments. arguments. The first one is going to be current user, you already know what this is. The second one is going to be post, which I'm referring to this one, dot user. And the last is, of course, um, uh, comment dot content. This will get me the uh, content for this comment here. Now on the mailer, I have three arguments. So I have cur current user, I have the post user, and I have the content. Okay, now the mail to is going to be uh, actually let's put the post user, that's what we want. We want the post owner to receive the email. So as uh, as the same as controllers, if you want to use some variables on your templates, you have to define some instance variables here. So the way to do it is, is current user equals current user. Uh, the post user equals post user and the content equals content. Okay, so I can use these three variables uh, on my templates. Uh, so let's do it first. Uh, let's just change this to comment created. I'm not putting a body because I want to render through the uh, template. Uh, and the from, as you know, is uh, as I'm using uh, Gmail settings, is is, is um, it doesn't matter what what you put here. Uh, now let's go to our actual template. So where is it? It's under. We have to create it actually because we we didn't create it so we have to create a new folder here the same as the post so comment mailer must be as same the same as the the, the class name now in here we create the temple the, the template so uh comment created remember must be the same name as the method so comment underscore created dot erb and in here we're gonna pass some uh, very simple things. So, uh, hi, uh, now what I want is the post uh, user dot name. That's what I want. Uh, and I'm gonna put here somebody has, post, has commented on your post. So, who is somebody? It's the current user. The current user, I, I missed the at sign here. So the current user has commented on your post. And in here, I'm going to put the last um, variable that I have, which is add content. You can see it works exactly like the same as the controller and view. Um, now, I think we are all set uh, to send this um, the email. Of course, we have to uh, uh, put the dot deliver here, otherwise, we will not send this email. Okay, so let's try it and let's 
comment on your post. See what happens. Okay, so it took a little, um, which is a good sign. It means that he's um, processing the email, and you can see here, I already received one. Comment created. Okay, I just mistake, uh, just a slightly mistake in here under the view. Of course, I have to put the current user dot name. Okay, so let me just delete this one. Let's put another comment. Okay, so it's processing. Now let's go check here. If I refresh it, you see here, comment created. So, hi John. And John is the post user here, which happens to be the same as the email. Uh, hi John, John has commented on your post. Another comment is the content of that email. So you can see it's all set up. Uh, it was uh, very easy. You have your first email sent from your Rails app. So now, uh, as I've promised you, let's uh, send emails through Mandrill. Because it's quite alright to send to, through a Gmail account, but if you want to send a lot of emails, uh, we should use an email service just for that. So uh, let's do it. Uh, go to uh, mandrillapp.com and uh, create an account. I have uh, already one, uh, my own setup. Um, and go here down here on the left to the uh, section uh, to the settings section uh, it's going to prompt you for the password it's taking a while okay um, and these settings here this have SMTP settings are the ones that you should put on your application rb and this password here is this API key over there. Okay, so if you go to the dev center of Heroku and search for Mendel, you will get this sending with a SMTP, and this is actually the standard configuration you need. So just copy this, go to your application.rb, and let's just comment this out because we are no longer using Gmail. Paste this action mailer here, and now just gonna delete this domain. We don't need this domain here I'm sorry okay in in here you have to put your username and your username is uh, your actual um, uh, email from the account from Mandrill uh, Mandrill app account as you can see here the username is your email and the password is this API key you're free to use it because I will change it afterwards so in here you put your password you see and believe it or not this is just what you need to do to set up your SMTP settings uh, so let's um, restart the server and see what we have before actually as I told you when you send from the Gmail account this will be over over uh, overwritten so and you don't need to worry with that but if you're using uh, Mantrial this will gonna matter. This uh, you, 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 this is what actually gonna appear on your uh, email header from. So uh, let's put services at domain dot com at my domain dot com. Okay, let's do the same for the mailer here. Services at my domain dot com. Now let's actually uh, see what we have. So if I create a new post, so uh, last post, some content here. Okay, so it's uh, processing, which is a good thing. Uh, we just have to see here. Okay, you already received it. Now from services at mydomain.com, that from Heather that we said, but now look this via this server. Is coming from Mandrill app. This is very cool. This is my first mailer. This is coming from the uh, the actual body because it's the post mailer. But now let's um, let's do a comment on that mailer. So uh, let's do some comment. I don't matter what it is. Okay. Now if we go back to our page, let's refresh it. We should uh, be here in a minute now. Sometimes it takes uh, a little longer.
Okay, so you can see here, services, commented, created. So, hi, John. John has commented on your post, and this is the content. Okay, so um, you can see this is very easy to use, and I surely recommend you to uh, uh, go further um, and check the Mandrill uh, services because they are amazing. And I've just shown you uh, the SMTP settings because you have you can have a complete API integration, and they have a lot of analytics to give you uh, about, about your email. Has uh, as you can see here. Um, average sends, the spam complaints, uh, average open rate, average uh, click rate. So this is very, very uh, useful uh, and powerful to use. So, um, okay, so I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, this is all from this uh, Stuckcast. Um, so see you in another one.